In this video, we're going to add screw bosses and board supports to the bottom housing. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with the bottom housing of our design, and we're going to add those screw bosses in the corners. Now, initially when we talked about this, we talked about the fact that we could have these screw bosses go in either direction. We need to determine whether or not we want the screws to come in from the top side, or if we want to keep the top completely clean and we want them to come in from the bottom side. The way that Hammond did this is they had them come from the base plate, the flange, and they, they had them go in this direction. Now, in their case, they were mounting or they intended this to be the mounting flange. In our case, however, it's flipped around. We are actually mounting from the bottom, the zip ties go over the top. So what we wanna do is we actually want our screws to come in from this bottom side. So as we're designing, we need to sort of keep that in mind. So what I wanna do to get started is I wanna take a look at some of the things that we need to think about when we're designing these. So obviously the board is here and we want to add some additional support features to sort of help the board help be held in place. We, we want to locate it. We already know that it's positioned in plane, but we know that it's not going to stay there. So one thing that we can do is, is we can sort of approach this by having a, a recess for the head of the screw on this side and making sure that it comes down far enough so that it's on the back side of that PCB. So once again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the electronics housing and I'm gonna bring back my PCB solid body. And I'm gonna start by creating a sketch on the other side. I wanna make sure that I am activating this component while I work on it. I'm gonna start a new sketch. And again, I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and select that bottom face. Now remember when we do that, we automatically bring the profile in. And uh, we do have some comments that we created very early on about the screw. So you can see that the head diameter and the head height are right here. So 0.167 inches and 0.062 is the head height. So I'm gonna get started first by using my circle tool. So I'm gonna get circle and I wanna find the center point of this. And I'm gonna just put in the actual head height. So 0.167, but remember that's metric values in the sketch itself and we have an inch value. So I'm just gonna simply put IN after it and hit enter. It's gonna automatically convert that. Now, you'll notice it tried to go to wall thickness, so let's try this again. 0.167 space IN, and you see that it's picking up the wall thickness. So we wanna make sure that we're actually using inch. So I'm gonna just type in inch completely. So if you ever run into that problem where it's trying to use uh, an expression that you created, you can always type in inch completely. So this gives us 4.242 millimeters. That's the head diameter, which means that the plastic needs to be wider than that, right? So that's the, that's the big piece. So if we take this, we need to actually make it a little bit bigger because we need to account for a small variation in screw size. We need to make sure that it can center itself. So I'm actually going to increase that. I'm gonna add a little bit. I'm gonna add 0.25 and that 0.25 is millimeters because I didn't put IN or INCH after it. So I can mix units in those in the dimension dialog boxes and that works just fine. So now we have a value here or a screw size that can completely account for the head of the screw. But we need to increase that. We need to make it a little bit bigger because what we're gonna do is we're going to be taking this and we're gonna be making a wall thickness value. Now remember that for internal features, we're not gonna use that full two millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is offset this it's gonna be positive, but I'm gonna start typing I for that in wall thickness, and I'm gonna hit enter. So this in wall thickness value is that internal wall thickness that we're using. That's 60% of the overall thickness of our housing. That comes in at 1.2 millimeters. So now this feature is, is going to start getting complicated. It's not quite enough for us to hold on to the, the PCB here. We need to add another feature. We need to add some additional material, but we can do that off of the sides. We can sort of add these little pads, that'll be fine. And as long as we keep that consistent wall thickness, we'll be okay. But the bigger problem that we're gonna see is that we're getting into this rounded corner here and we're gonna have a lot of plastic material in the corner. That's gonna be problematic and likely what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to hack away some of that corner to make it work. But 
if we if we decide to go forward with that, what ends up happening is we get a sink mark, potentially a sink mark in those corners, and those are things that we want to avoid. So as we look at this, we have the hole size for the screw head, we've got the wall thickness value that we want for internal features, and I want to go ahead and I want to add the diameter of the screw, and I also want to add a little bit more material. So I'm going to go ahead and put a circle here, and I'm going to start typing H. We've got hole min and hole max. I'm going to start with hole max because this is going to be the point at which the screw goes through, and it's going to taper down from here. But remember that this value is actually for threading. So that value right there is accounting for the hole threading and not the passing value. So I'm going to do C, and I'm going to do another circle, and I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger, and I'm going to say 2.75 millimeters. So this is going to be my passing value. Because I'm not going to be using the smaller one, I'm going to leave it there as construction. And that's going to help me later on when I go to sort of create the hole on the other side of the housing. The next thing I'm going to do is come in with a two point rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle down this direction and I'm going to draw one over here. I'm going to use a line tool and I'm going to find that midpoint and I'm going to draw that to my origin here and I'm going to draw one over to this midpoint. You notice that this automatically puts some sort of constraint here. So this is something that we want to make sure we delete. We don't want to accidentally attach this anywhere. So this point right here, we need to remove that constraint. Uh, if we have trouble with it, we can always uh, we can always come in and move points around and see if we can find it. So you can see there's one. And if we select it again, this one here, let's delete that, delete that. And if you're having trouble, Sometimes just going back to the beginning can be a little bit easier. So I'm going to come over with a line and I'm going to bring it down here. And again, you can see that we're snapped here. So I'm going to just, I'm going to scrap this because I don't want to snap to the edge of that board. I'm going to scrap that line and scrap that and pull that point back over. And then I want to create a two point rectangle that is not attached to any geometry. We're gonna select that. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that these are at the midpoint. And then I'm gonna create a vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint. So I want these to come out perfectly horizontal or vertical from these references. Next, I'm gonna create a construction line. I'm gonna use X on the keyboard, or you can select over here to change those to construction. Then I'm gonna use the equal constraint to make these equal. And the same thing for their long sides, make sure that those are equal. And these lines, they're construction lines, they're distances. So that means if I hit escape and I start to manipulate these, their position or any of that stuff, that they're gonna to move together. Next, D on the keyboard to start a dimension tool. And this is gonna be that internal wall thickness. And then we need to figure out how far we want these to go out. So I'm just gonna say three millimeters. And then I need to figure out where this is gonna be. So I'm gonna bring this back to three millimeters. That puts it inside of this outside boss, but outside of the head. So any potential overlap that we might have or issues we might have, everything looks fine there. So now we, we have the starting point, what we need. We, we have something from the bottom of the PCB that can go downward and positively locate it from the bottom. But we don't know if we have enough material or enough height to actually make this work. So I'm gonna start by first extruding this out. I'm going to select all my profiles. I want to hide the PCB. And I want to select all the profiles that I need to extrude out. And that's going to be all these little sections as well. Uh, noting that we could exclude the, this section here if we want to bring this further up to the PCB. Makes it a little bit harder for manufacturer. It kind of depends on you know, where you, uh, who you're working with or where you're working with. And for right now, I'm going to leave this center open because I know that's for the screw passing. I'm not going to worry about the head. I'm going to include all this. And I want to bring this down to my housing. So I'm going to say that I want to go to an object. I'm going to select this body as the object. And we want to make sure that we're drafting. So again, this is going to be joining together. And the draft angle is going to be our D for draft. And make sure that we're drafting outward. So when we view this from the top, we want to be able to see those walls. Everything looks OK there. We're going to say OK. And then we want to take a look at these results. So you can see here in the corner, what we end up having is uh, we have a lot of material here. And it's not too bad because we're just barely coming up on that fillet. 
But one thing we might want to consider is maybe reducing some material here if we need to or connecting it to the wall. That is something that could be manufactured, but we're creating a knife edge there and that's probably just bad practice. So that's something we need to consider. But before we do that, we need to consider the, the head height, that 0 0.062 inches. And we're gonna bring back that last sketch. So I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna show that last sketch. And then what I wanna do is I wanna extrude this out. So I'm gonna say extrude. I'm gonna take this and the inside. I wanna offset it. And I'm gonna offset it at least the internal wall thickness. So I'm gonna offset it I for internal wall thickness. And then I want to extrude all the way through. So through all, and if I rotate this around, this is what we're doing. We're creating this opening for the screw head to fit into. So that looks okay. Objects to cut is just this body. And now what we've done is we've accounted for the screw head. So now we've got a, a space that's plenty deep. The screw head can drop in there. And we've got a passing hole for the screw head. And we've got this internal wall thickness here. So we have enough material there. And the PCB can sit on that. So you can see here that we've accounted for holding the PCB and we've accounted for the screw passing through here and we've accounted for a place for the, the head of the screw. Now we need to repeat all of that on the other side. Now, because we have symmetry, uh, we actually have something that we can do here. We can create a, a, a pattern, whether it's a circular pattern or a rectangular pattern, or we could even do a mirror and a mirror here. And there's a couple things that we can do, but let's go ahead and let's try to use a circular pattern. Even though I know our object is not circular, I'm gonna select features. We're gonna do this extrude and this extrude, both of those features. The axis is gonna be our origin because we are working with symmetry. So we can select the Z axis. We're gonna select two. And when we select two and we're going a full uh, you know, sort of a full angular spacing. You can see it puts it right in the correct spot. We're gonna say, okay, allowing it to adjust. Now, if we zoom out, we've put that on the other side. So in the first case, what we ended up doing was copying the sketch and doing everything at the sketch level. But in this case, it might be easier for us just to make use of that symmetry that we worked so hard in the beginning to make sure we had. So circular pattern, even though it's not round, seems to work out okay. The next thing that we, we really need to think about is the fact that we don't want the boss to stop here. We're not gonna be threading, we're not gonna carry a boss from the other side all the way down to here. We need to add more material. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take this and we're going to um, we're gonna bring it up. But before we do that, there's a critical piece of information that we need to remember. Even though we created all the extrudes and we patterned it, when we did that second extrude, we didn't have any draft. So we need to go back to this feature, we need to edit, and we need to include draft. So I'm gonna do minus D, select my draft parameter, and say okay. We wanna make sure that we can see those walls. And you can see negative is not the correct direction. So we just go back, edit the feature, we're gonna remove the minus, and make sure that we're drafting outward. So again, we need to be mindful of those draft angles at all times to make sure that we can draft these features. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come down and create a sketch. And I wanna actually select both faces. So I'm gonna project this one as well. And then I'm gonna use C on the keyboard. And I want to uh, create a center diameter circle here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And what this is going to be is this is going to be the boss thickness that's carrying down or intersecting with the other housing. Now, remember that we have a consistent internal wall thickness here for the head, but we really need that for the screw diameter. So D on the keyboard, and we're gonna dimension these two together. And this is gonna be our I, our in wall thickness, and we're gonna hit enter there. We're gonna repeat that process over here, the distance between our projected edge it's gonna be I on the keyboard for that internal wall thickness. And you can see this actually works out pretty well because it doesn't match the PCB perfectly, but it's pretty close. So it gives us a little additional location. And we're gonna finish that sketch. We're gonna hit E to extrude. We're gonna extrude both of these out. And as we bring both of these out, we need to figure out how far we wanna go. Uh, you can see here that probably going up to the reveal height is gonna be a good height. So instead of distance, we can go to object, select this face. But remember that we do need that draft. So D for draft, select our draft parameter, 
In this case, we need to make sure that it's negative. We want it to draft inward, and we're joining it together with the, uh, the body. So make sure that the PCB is still its own thing. But now we've created this, these little extensions, these bosses. Now we do know that this corner could be a potential problem. If this was a high production part, something that needed a lot of uh, control over surface quality, obviously we would need to go back to the drawing board a little bit because we wanna be very mindful of these. For this, we certainly don't wanna connect the entire thing to the side. So one thing that we could do is we could think about adjusting the overall size of the housing, make it a little bit longer if we needed to. We could adjust the size of the screw, maybe find a smaller screw so that this could be smaller. Or instead of using like a pan head screw, we could use a countersunk and countersink the backside of the housing. But so far this looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with those results. When we bring back the PCB, the original PCB, you can see that we are holding the board underneath. You can see that this goes to the sort of proto area, but it is between, so that would probably be okay. This is just sort of a, an additional area that, that might potentially be connected. There are some of these, these pads, these vias that are connected to traces. You can see this one here and these ones over here. These are all connected, but this stuff over here is just kind of extra. So I'm not concerned about holding the board there. This obviously has plenty of space. And we're doing it on both corners and we're supporting it at these screw holes. So everything looks pretty well supported here. Also note that our decision for the size here works out well because this is the copper pad or uh, you know the copper layer and we're not even coming close to touching that. And it's not necessarily a problem, but if we were using a metal screw, then that's something that we wanna be very mindful of. The silk screen on top is not an issue, but you wanna make sure that your screw head isn't actually touching the ground plane. Even though we're screwing into plastic, it's just something we want to avoid. There are a couple other things that we need to consider. And when we think about the top portion of the housing, if we bring back our section analysis and uh, we go ahead, let's go ahead and actually create a new section analysis. So I'm gonna to go to inspect section analysis. I'm gonna use my default YZ plane, but I wanna bring it back until I get to that screw boss. So until I get to about there, let's go 33.5. And some things that we want to consider or think about. So we took this screw boss and we tapered the screw boss. In this case, we tapered it so that the inside was able to be pulled from this direction. Now, in reality, we already have to have a core or a piece that's going in here. So this could, this draft here could be flipped the other direction so that the inside and the outside walls are parallel. But when we're doing an extrude, we don't have control over it in that manner. We can either have them taper toward each other or away from each other. So if we wanna correct this, we have to use the draft tool. So we can go to modify, draft, we select the pull direction and the faces to draft. And then in this case, we can change it. Let's say we just change it to two degrees. You can see that it's tapering it inward. So if this was the, the, the diameter that we wanted for our screw to pass, and we set this to two degrees, what we're essentially doing is we got rid of draft completely. If we set it to four degrees, now we're drafting uh, inward an additional two degrees. So two degrees is, again, it's making these walls parallel. If you wanted it to flip, we could flip the pull direction. You can see that it's changing the orientation. Uh, we could also select the pull direction as the bottom. So let's go ahead and rotate this around. We could select this as our pull direction. And this is gonna change the angle here. So we're gonna have to flip this around. I'm gonna say minus two degrees. And you can see now it's taking this hole size and it's tapering outward. And we would wanna do this for both holes. So I'm gonna rotate this around. And for our faces, I'm gonna hold down control or command and try to select that. And it's not allowing me because of the, the selection, the faces aren't chained together, so we'll have to do it manually. But I am gonna change this and I'm gonna use D for draft, get rid of that DEG. That way we are actually attaching it to um, you know, our specific draft parameter. And then I'm gonna hide the top housing for now. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So modify, draft, this is our pull direction, this is our face, and we wanna make sure that we are going um, minus D for draft, we're gonna select that, and we're gonna say okay. And we can check by manipulating our section analysis. Let's go ahead and edit this. Just pull it until we get to this one. 
and just make sure that that's okay. So what we're looking for here is to make sure that we're tapering, uh, tapering in a manner that makes sense. And you can see here that, let's go to minus four. Uh, that looks okay. Minus, minus draft may or may not give us the right result. We'll, we'll do a draft analysis at the end and see, but mainly I just wanted to make sure we understood that using things like extrude don't necessarily give us the control we need. And going back after the fact to add that is potentially helpful. So if we bring the top housing back, I wanna talk about the fact that we have a long way to go from here all the way to the top of the housing. That's a lot of plastic. And we have to keep in mind that this is where we're threading into. So these are also considerations that we need to think about when we're designing our housings and where we design the split line or the difference between the two pieces. This is probably going to be okay, but there is the possibility that if you send something like this out to manufacturer, they might tell you that the, the feature is too tall. They might need more draft or they might need thicker material. And because this is the cosmetic side or the outside section where it would be visible to the customer, then these are design decisions where you might say, well, I need to bring this boss up, even though it's past this parting line, to make this one smaller. And it's all things that we can do and we can do it fairly easily. So we could obviously go back and we could fix the extrude, we could make those changes, but we can also come back and use things like press pull. So I can select this face, for example, I can select this one. And if we use the automatic option, you'll notice that extrude is highlighted here. And when extrude is highlighted, that means the automatic option is modifying the existing feature. So this tells me that I don't have to go back and find it. I can just simply come in and I can pull this up. And everything that happened after the fact, all the draft and any other features are not really going to be affected. So for example, we didn't create a new face. So you'll, you'll notice that it added this offset faces here uh, simply because there were additional features. Sometimes you can get away with modifying the original and be fine. But just keep in mind that we have tools like this at our disposal that we don't need to worry so much about. The last thing I wanna do in this video is I want to measure. So the screw that we picked out, you can get in different lengths. And at this point, we need to know what we're working with. So if we go from the, the place where the head of the screw is going to be, you can see that we're already 0.323 inches. So this is something where we need to go back and just double check that we have a screw that is long enough and fits in the housing. If you find out that you need to make some adjustments, we have a lot of room in this countersink area so we can move it up or down if needed, but that's gonna make a thicker section for where that pad is holding the PCB. So there are these, this sort of give and take, these consequences to our design decisions that we need to, sometimes we need to confront or make adjustments to. But right now, everything looks pretty good. The last bit of information that we will need to think about is whether or not we need a positive location between this boss and the boss on the other side. Now we have a lip and a groove for the major part of the housing, but a lot of times you'll see a very similar process for aligning things like circular bosses. So that's something that we're gonna deal with when we add them to the other side of the housing, but it is a consideration, something that we need to think about. So at this point, we've done quite a bit. Let's make sure that we do save. And of course, if you have any questions, please let me know. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.